Yes. What's up, everybody? My name is Paula Rubio, a.k.a. GN. Welcome to another episode of FMA Source. Today, we're going to be doing something pretty cool. We're going to be exploring Balinta Walk systems that you may not have heard about. Balinta Walk is a beautiful group of systems. There are many, many flavors out there. And uh, recently in the boudoir, which is the Garage Dojo, and a crew of people that I associate with here locally in Toronto have began really diving deep into the concepts presented in Balinta Walk. And we're trying to find pathways to train it more appropriately to our intentions, uh, which is, I think, an important thing to do when you're studying Filipino martial arts is to filter these teachings through your own training goals, intentions, and priorities. One of the priorities at the boudoir is honest pressure testing and progress by way of failure. So we're actually actively finding ways to manufacture failure in our Balinta Walk practice in order to make it more appropriate for our goals. So without further ado, I want to say that in this video, we're going to be exploring roughly four different Balinta Walk systems that you may not have heard of. One of them is actually a relatively new system that is bred from experiences from different Balint Balintawak systems. Um, and I'm going to, as we watch these videos, I'm going to explain to you what I'm seeing um, in terms of value. But generally, I hope that you take a moment to uh, look into the video description of this and subscribe to these Balintawak based. Uh, channels. It's going to be a fun one. I hope you guys stick around. Let's get the show started. Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. You're finished. Ah, get up. What? Like, uh, I still get hyped up by that intro. That is easily the dopest FMA podcast show intro in the universe. Sorry. I just think that's super dope. All right. We're going to begin talking about Belinda Walk Systems. Uh, we're going to start with... I'm doing this on the fly, by the way. Mm, what do we start with? Let's start with this. Let's start with Carabao Arts. Yo, this is a dope one. So this dude shows me this video and you can already tell this video is on a different level like look at the color correction look at the setting the fact that they're wearing fencing mask tells you they're about to go beyond you know uh, hopefully what it tells you is they're about to go beyond the the formula the patterns which by the way i'm going to speak a lot about right some some of you may know it as grouping systems some of you may know it as flow drills um Keep in mind that as I talk about the benefits of other practice, that in no way am I discounting the benefit of a grouping system or flow drills or patterns or anything like that. It's just that those things have been so exposed that it's beginning to um, overtake the narrative that Balenta Walk is actually a totality of systems and that there are different training methods. Um, some of which are more alive than others. Some are dirtier, some are messier. I'm going to show you some of these videos. But this video in particular, um, it's by Hiraya FMA, which is uh, a group based out in France. I was actually talking to the founder earlier on today, and he told me, you know, a very familiar story about studying within the confines of systems. And then once they started to 
tried to explore pathways of training that was more appropriate to them that wasn't necessarily part of, of the system curriculum, they started getting a sense of coldness. Now, this is a familiar, familiar story for anybody who has um, done something similar where you abide by the, the governing rules of the system and then you find yourself within the system, which is something that, you know, all the great grandmasters that I speak with uh, say is, a, is something that we should do. We should find uh, ourselves within the system. I believe it was Professor Remy Presses who put it eloquently as finding your art within the art. But it seems that when folks actually do this, there's still a tendency to receive some sort of coldness or rejection or even exiled uh, in some cases. But we're not going to talk about too much about, you know, these negatives. I really want to keep this as positive as possible. And I want to watch this video with you. I, I must have watched this video like 13 times. So let's watch it and you tell me what you see, okay? To lower down this volume all right so what what i'm seeing here is messiness what i'm seeing is uh, it's it's dirty right it's not as pretty as a, a grouping system because these guys are actually earning their entries um you see some missed attempts at stick grabs you see resolutions um you can tell that when standardization is removed and you, and you open it up a little bit it begins to look a little bit more like what a stick fight might be mind you you're still seeing a healthy level of control these guys aren't swinging full power they're not going full out but this is what might constitute light sparring in Balintawak. what i see here are on shot targets right like that thrust to the face was on target. These thrusts to the stomach, that disarm, these are all very honest expressions of Balintawa concepts. This is absolutely beautiful. They're still maintaining some aesthetic of recognizable Balintawa as an art form. <clears throat> they aren't keeping each other at bay with uh, Largo strikes, which is, I think, important when you are... Let me pause that for a second. So striking in Largo range, effective striking in Largo range ought to be a preventative measure or a barrier for people wanting to crash in. If you're, if you're, if you're executing Largo tactics well, it should be, as much as it is offensive, it should be a critical defensive tactic to keep people who want to fight in Balintawak Korto ranges. It should be uh, very, very effective in keeping them at bay. So um, these players, these Balintawak players here, um, uh, they're they're still allowing themselves to enter free range, right? Which is which is absolutely fine. But they're keeping the honest exchanges once they get into that range. I th actually think it's very critical in subsequent practice. Like this isn't the entirety of their practice, but I think it's it's critical to earn your entries, right? Not just walk into them. Look at those failed attempts at stick grabs. This is just stunning, stunning work. I lo look at that. Boom. Nice straight punch to the face there. Again, they're not going super hard, but you know, you feel these. Even even when you're wearing a fencing mask, if you guys spar with a fencing mask, you know that it's not really great at uh, dissipating the energy. In fact, it uh, concentrates it at certain points. 
That's why you still see people get knocked the F out wearing fencing masks. Oh man, kicks? What the heck? All right, enough of this. This is, uh, yeah, check him out. Hiraya FMA uh, on YouTube. I believe they call it the Carabao system, which is an amazing animal to name a system after uh, in line with uh, other Balintawak systems as well. So what I loved about that clip is that that was light sparring. That was light sparring outside of the context of um, predictable formulaic patterns, which again, um, definitely has its value. But I think if that's all you ever do, then there is, a, this is how I like to characterize it, right? There are these two islands in Balintawak, you know, one island are the aesthetics, the patterns, the grouping systems, the flow drills. And on the other island is open format sparring or fighting. And then there are people on this island trying to swim to this other island and they're drowning in between. But there are actually within the space between these two islands, there are these little sandbars where people can rest, right? And these sandbars include things like what you just saw here, right? This is a missing link in Balinta Walk training. I'm going to show you guys another missing link in Balinta Walk training. Uh, this is the Watt Bag system and you are about to see cm eddie velez i remember seeing a photo of this guy a long time ago and i thought i i, I thought look at this man what <laughs> it looks a little bit silly it looks a little bit ridiculous but this is uh, in my opinion this is genius what 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 you're seeing this man do is to create a makeshift type armor this is a type of mitt work which is a missing element is a missing link in the totality of, of balinta walk training that you may not get by just doing one system right so what you're seeing here i i, I believe this man is a time traveler this man is a genius who whoever he was or he is um he understood that yes while there is value in control you know you still need to make contact and contact appropriate to the range that you're going to face. So this is from an unlisted video. I remember seeing photos of this man and thinking, what an incredible mind. And then today I actually found a good quality version of the video. It's worth watching. Um, so here it is. By the way, the link is in the description so you guys can watch this whole thing. Oh no. Yeah, I thought I heard about this man passing away. So here's here's to your legacy, sir. Here is to your brilliance. Yeah, it's really let's take a moment here. Um yeah, I I do vaguely remember hearing of of uh of this man passing away, but the watt bag system is is absolutely um worth exploring. And again, you look at what this guy has created look at what this man has created he he just put together a bunch of it uh, looks like padding from from different arts and different sports and he's he's taken that idea he saw a void he didn't find a solution that anyone else had created so he created his own path and this is what i'm talking about i don't know the story of uh of of this man um but I imagine, I imagine if he belonged to a bigger Balintawa community and he began to express his truths and he began to find um, different pathways that were perhaps outside the norm, I imagine he would have had detractors. I imagine he would have had critics. I imagine he would have had people who called them crazy. But what I'm seeing here is absolute genius. So uh, Eddie Velez, um, yeah, uh, thank you for this contribution. Thank you for this contribution. Yeah, so this is what you guys need to search. I hope you guys can see that. Walk back. I think it's world something. It's, it sounds funny, but um, let's see what Wattbag stands for. 
knew it. I, I think I, I did an interview with Moni Velez a very, very long time ago. Um, very interesting lineage of Balinta Wakir. Uh, wow. So Eddie Velez, Moni Velez, and Chito Velez. I, I'm, I'm reading in the what bag uh, website. Just, just type type it up. W O T B A G. Learn as much about this uh, system as possible. This is a beautiful, beautiful. Um, there we go. World original Taval Arnis group. Thank you, FJ. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is it. What bag? Uh, the other system that we watched earlier is a new creation. Uh, it's called uh, Carabao. Carabao FMA. You can find them on YouTube. They do some amazing drills. But let's uh, let's continue to give uh, GM uh, Eddie Eddie um, his moment here. Wow. What a wonderful brain this guy had. I agree with you, JTR. Look at the sounds this old man is making. Oh, wow. Nice finish. Nice finish. Nice finish. I love this video so much. Um, I, I wish that this man was still around. And, and look, whenever you see videos like this, as Filipino martial arts ambassadors, what we ought to be thinking is, where was he going? Where was he going with this? What was his purpose? And how can we utilize what we have today to push that concept forward? This isn't a disrespect to these masters to think that we may have something to offer in line with his line of thinking. So I'm thinking maybe we wear a fencing mask. Maybe we wear a Spartan gear helmet. Maybe we use more appropriate padding so that we can strike harder from realistic ranges on target, honest strikes. I think what, that this is what this uh, this man was going for. He still wanted to infuse a sense of control. So this this guy, whoever he was, that's being fed, you know, he's not he's not returning with you know incredibly powerful strikes. But see that that thrust right there. That okay, I can't pause it. But that thrust was deep and is on target. He just needs to add a little bit more energy, right? So this is kind of what's missing when we only use the stick as our points of, of, of contact. And this is what's missing when, you know, you see the, the formula and the attack may be ahead of the defense, but the defender still gets the idea that, Okay, I missed, but I was still successful. So there's there's a there's de there's a definite learning value to that. But when it comes to fighting, when there is no repercussion for a late defense, that can create detrimental training scars that you know may prove to be uh, a liability when you begin the process of getting into the open market of sparring, as I like to call it. So shout out. So FJ seems to have a lot of information. That's Richie. He's a student of GM Eugene and the Velez brothers. Shout out to Richie. Um, another suggestion. Search for a video called Tombada with Eddie Velez and Fabian Joliville. It's on Fabian's channel. There are so many, so many amazing, amazing Filipino martial arts YouTube channels out there with like 100 subscribers. Meanwhile, a piece of crap one like mine's got three thousand. So can we can we fix that, guys? Go ahead. The links are in the description. Please subscribe to these channels. Whenever you see an FMA video that's interesting to you, hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, you got people who are <laughs> I don't want to call them out, but on on FMA discussion, there's a guy that's like, oh, these unknown FMA masters don't want to 
be known. I'm like, they all have YouTube channels. Y'all are just not subscribing to them. Y'all are just not supporting them. So support these YouTube channels in FMA. This, believe it or not, like it or not, the social media landscape is the strongest front we've got in preserving the Filipino martial arts. Anyway, I went on a tangent. Can we watch the next video, please? Okay, so <laughs> this one is Ascal Hy Hybrid. <laughs> I was about to pronounce hybrid. <laughs> I was, I was going to call it Ascal Hybrid Arnis International. So I'm going to show you what I like about this video. Let's, let's have a watch. <laughs> Links in the description. Subscribe to them. Support them. I got to show you something. Look at <laughs> You see that man with the stick in the background? All right. His facial reaction is all you need to know about the intensity that these guys are going through. So watch, watch for him. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that guy in the background with the stick. Right. He's like, yeah, these guys are doing it. Boom. Okay, not the best song in the world. <clears throat> Look at the intensity in their faces. There's honest exchanges in these moments in between. And it doesn't look as pretty as your standard grouping system. Because there's actually a fight happening. Like, that was dope. There's real energies being exchanged. It's a little hard to see what was going on there. I like this old guy on the right. Who is this guy? Does anybody know who that guy is? The guy in the black shirt? Nice. Oh, that was a that was an honestly earned disarm, okay. You see that the guy in the green tried to dislodge it, and it's actually what amounted to his own disarm. Boom. Ooh. This is dope. Shout out Ascal Hybrid. This is incredible. Even that, how dirty, how messy is that? But that is real. Struggling through it. Failing. Oh, I'm a big fan, Ascal. Superman in the background there. Nice! That was a dope moment. Tried to go for a double or single leg stick takedown, paid for it. Yo, this this is FJ. You know so much, bro. It's GM Video Assistant. He's the guy in the Superman shirt. Okay, I knew there was something up with that man. This is a dope Balenta walk system. Is that him right there in the background? That's GM Vidua. Oh, I like him. He's got good energy. He's got good vibes. It's GM Vidua system. Oh man, Balenta Walk is so rich, it's so deep, y'all. I love what these guys are doing though. Oh nice. Y'all, oh my god. Did you see that elbow? Boom! Oh shit, sorry. I just popped my mic. That was just amazing, man. Oh my god, he grabbed the stick and he used it to drive his right elbow in. That is freaking incredible, right? You'd think that a Corto system would be employing a ton of elbows. Like if they were practicing honestly and if they were sparring, you would see a boatload of elbows in close range. Honestly, you would. Because in our practice here at the Boudoir, elbows are freaking critical in close range. So I'm so happy. I didn't even see this when I first watched it. It's happening so fast. This dude pulled a stick in to drive like just an elbow that, again, they're still practicing with control because if that elbow lands, this dude is done. 
Amazing work, Ascal. Amazing work. Boom. Oh my gosh. Oh. I love that. I love that. He got disarmed, but look what he did. He's going in. He should have probably covered, but that was dope. I love the spirit of these boys, you guys. I love these guys. Oh, I love what they're doing. I don't really know them. Who is this other guy in black? This guy looks like he's a friggin'... He's gotta be a, a, a grandmaster or like a master. Dope. <laughs> Man. So I think, you know, I, I think these Balintawak systems deserve more exposure, more recognition. They are doing things. And again, here's the thing, you guys. Uh, it doesn't look pretty, does it? Like it doesn't look as clean, as polished, as as cinematic. Um, but these are important practices that we've all just been watching here, right? These are important critical elements when you remove, you know, um, predictability and patterns. You can, I mean, if you, I, I don't need to convince you of this. You try it. <laughs> it's going to look messy, right? You try it. I hope you do. So the next video we're going to watch. So we saw the Carabao Arts, which by the way, Hiraya FMA on YouTube. Y'all need to check that out. We saw the just brilliance of uh, GM Eddie Velez and the what bag system. That's another one worth it. So they seem to me like a bunch of bangers. They're like the knuckle draggers of uh, of Balintawak. Like they go at it. I love that. Um, and then we, we saw more knuckle draggers. The Askel Hybrid Arni system. Uh, these are all absolutely incredible. What I like about Carabao Arts is, you know, um, it's it's a it's a newer expression of Balintawak based on experiences from a number of Balintawak systems. But they're like, and by the way, the founder is a, a Romanian who lives in France. So if you know anything about those two countries and their fighting culture, you'll know why. You'll know why he's like. I'm going to seek my own path, you know? I'm going to find something that may be missing. Now, let me address something else, okay? Um, I want to readdress the idea that this is not a criticism of one training method over another. This is a criticism of a singularity of a, of a, of a training method. That's all it is. And I know that there are a lot of people out there who, who might feel, you know, slighted. That's not my intention. Um, folks who won't feel slighted are those who train Balintawak and other systems. Uh, because there are, you know, I mean, it's impossible to train, let's say, Balintawak and Pikiti Tersha. You know, and Pikiti Tersha has a very, very healthy culture that's very much alive and well based on sparring and fighting. And so when a Pikiti Tertian takes Balintawak, he's going to want to take that Pikiti Tertian spirit into Balintawak practice. And that's precisely what you see here at the Boudoir with um, myself, with, uh, with Guru Joe, uh, you know, Ryan Pope, um, Steve Dinamo, and then you've got your JKD Wing Chun influence from uh, Sifu Mark Medeiros, your Judo influence from, you know, James Lin. And this is what everyone ought to be doing with their balintawak. Balintawak is not an ingredient. Balintawak is a stew. So get those, get those ingredients mixing in there and see what dish you come up with. All right, you guys ready for the next video? Um, so here, speaking of Ryan Pope and Steve Dinamo, here's a here's a missing link. This is at the boudoir, obviously. Oi, he's gonna get him back. Boom.
Man, this is ugly. What is this crap? The application pieces of what I'm seeing right now. Okay, so that's, um, I don't even know what we call that. That's boudoir balintawak. So in this video example, I'm going to play it again while I talk through it. You can see that this is a missing link because they are still incorporating the aesthetics of balintawak. There are still some common feeds in balintawak here. But uh, characteristic of Coach Steve Dinamo's mitt holding work uh, or all of his work, he offsets the speed, the cadence, the timing, and the intensity. So this is sparring, but it's still feeder-based sparring. Um, the guy in blue, Coach Steve Dinamo, um, he's still leading the dance, so to speak, but he's not doing it under any sort of recognizable patterns because there is no recognizable pattern here. There are common strikes. Oh, absolutely beautiful. So here's an example that isn't quite sparring, not quite open market sparring, still with a healthy Balintawak aesthetic and executing Balintawak concepts close to what you saw in the Ascal hybrid uh, video, close to what you saw with the Carabao FMA, Hiraya FMA video. Um, and that you can see why GM uh, Eddie Velez's training methods, where you're actually hitting on target, begins to bridge those concepts into the open sparring format. So all of these Balintawak schools of thoughts, when you begin integrating them for the purpose of creating fighters in the open market, you, you create a very healthy environment for exploration. You get to ask some honest questions about, hey, why do we do this? Why, why are we doing this? Okay, so there's that. Hey, how are hey, San San Diego? Oh, San Diego. <laughs> I'm like, where is San Diego? Oh, San Diego Pala. San Diego, what's up? Greetings from the UK. I love your name, genuinely concerned. Um, thank you guys for watching FMA Source. I, I really appreciate it. Make sure you guys have subscribed. We're almost up to 3,000 subscribers. We got there very, very quickly. Um, thank you guys. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm I'm making $55 a month now. <laughs> a few earnings, but that's great though. That's great. I, I'm really I'm really thankful. I don't I don't do FMA for the money, you know. Uh, I'm sure none of you guys are either. Uh, although it's fine. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys another FMA video. This is the one I made recently. It's up on this channel. Um, yeah, I love this video. I love this video. So here you get to see, um, you get to see the boudoir process and how we take, uh, Balintawak concepts and we put it through the blender. But before that, Bertel one greetings from Munich, Germany. Can I just say, Okay, no offense to other European countries, but Germany and France, y'all are doing some incredible things with the Filipino martial arts, okay? I know there are other pockets. Yes, Switzerland. Yes, Spain. You know, I get it. The UK, you guys are all awesome. But something is happening with Filipino martial arts in France and in Germany specifically that is making me go, damn, damn. All right. Also in Canada. Straight up, Canada is an FMA destination country. So what you're about to see here is the boudoir process of training Balin to walk. You're going to see a variety of training methodologies. See, FJ, Germany, like, I'm telling you, man, after this video, we're going to talk about Germany. We're going to talk about France and why I think they are hotbeds, beds, Filipino marts. All right. So let's enjoy this video together. I want you guys to pay attention. Um, you know, this video was done in honor of uh, GM Bobby Tabuada. And really, you cannot have a Balintawa conversation without mentioning and honoring the work of someone like GM Bobby, you know, who spread Balintawa all over the world, made tremendous personal sacrifices in order to, you know, fulfill his promises to his grandmasters. And, and really, uh, if I'm being honest, there is no one in the Balintawak community that has done more for spreading the art of Balintawak than GM Bobby Tabuada. So this was in honor of him, but this is definitely a not, not 
let me be very clear. This is not a representation of, of Tabuada Balintawak, uh, not by by any means other than um, he being our inspiration and, and our entry point to this beautiful Balintawak uh, group of families or family of systems. Um, and also, once again, the, the grouping system has its value, 100%, 110%. And I wanted to be very clear that this is not an indictment of the grouping system, which I think is, you know, is valuable. All right. So let's watch this video together. Hope you guys enjoy. Oops. What did I do? What did I do, Rubio? Oh, there we go. Okay. This is what I need to do. Hit play. Hit it. Yeah, I love that. So as you can see, there uh, there was a variety of training methods there incorporated in that video, including uh, GM Bobby Tabuada's grouping system. Uh, what you saw partway through that video was, I think it's worth uh, exploring again. Let me just mute this. <clears throat> You're right here, right here. Okay, so you can see they're fighting out of range, right? And they, in a way, earn entry and then get into the grouping system. Still a bit of free play involved there, right? Um, here, you're you just you're seeing the grouping system. Here again, earning that entry into grouping system free play. Uh, but then you see this. That is a. That is a hard target right there. I don't know how he punches that. And then you see Guru Joe and I here doing compartmentalized Balinta walk sparring. The rule sets here, what well, we limited ourselves to three strikes after entry in order for it not to get messy. So again, setting rules and parameters in order to express Balinta walk without it getting too messy. Because if you go open format sparring while trying to express Balinta walk, it's going to look like what you're about to see next which is just is just friggin smashing right and of course there are artificialities that we need to discuss here right um we're both wearing protective gear uh and so the effects of these punches are, are going to be severely diminished but it allows for a really healthy exchange right so if you were to break up these moments that appear messy uh there are some honest honest exchanges in there so I think this what what you're seeing here is the thing that a lot of um, you know just uh, singular path Belinda walk players um, may not be so open to share because this looks friggin ugly. This looks like bad MMA. This looks like bad boxing. 
but that's because you've got sticks in play, <laughs> you know, and you've got two people who are really only beginning to explore Belinda Walk under these parameters, and it's not going to look pretty. And I think what we can do as, you know, Filipino martial artists in general, and I think this does happen at higher levels, but, you know, for those who only wish to promote and propagate a singular line of, um, of thinking, there's a lot to be, I mean, you look at this and, and there's really a lot to uh, criticize, you know, there's a lot to criticize. Oh, look at them. They're not doing this. Look at them. They're not doing that. Or that's not Balintawak. But this is an honest exploration. This is an honest, honest experimentation. And it's going to look ugly and it's going to look messy. Right. And it, it might even hurt a little bit. Um, but that's part of the process. And I think as Filipino martial artists on a global scale, we ought to begin becoming more vocal that, you know what? FMA is ugly, man. Like FMA is not always going to look pretty it's not always going to look absolute it's not always going to look certain and i think that by exploring back to what we were talking about here by exploring the totality of balintawak systems out there and uplifting these other thoughts ideas schools affiliations opinions methodologies training processes if you aren't enslaved by a singular path then you are free to explore and if you love balintawak uh, you you ought to explore the totality of it, and and I I say this with the utmost respect for individual systems. And I, let let me rephrase this, and let me say it in Pikiti Tertia terms, okay? So that way maybe I dull the edge because this may seem, you know, insulting even though it's not. So let me let me refer it back to what I know, which is Pikiti Tertia. Um, no one man, no one system. No one instructor can ever hope to capture, store, and be able to teach the totality of Pikiti Tertia, not even the Grand Tuhan himself. No one representative of Pikiti Tertia has all the answers to the questions contained within this broad idea of bladed engagements. So I think the same holds true for Belen Tawak. I think it's important that Belen Tawak practitioners cross-train and explore um, other inspirations. But most importantly, you need to filter it through, like I said at the beginning, your training goals, your intentions, right? If 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 you're looking at Belinda Walk as something other than an opportunity to express yourself through an art form, if you're looking at Belinda Walk not only as a means to get rank and promote a specific system, if there's a personal journey involved in your Balintawak, then you owe it to yourself to study and explore the totality of concepts within the Balintawak group of families. And that's all this whole thing was all about, that Balintawak is a big, 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 big group of families, each one having something to offer. And even outside of Balintawak, as a Pikiti Tertia practitioner, as a Kalis Illustrissimo practitioner, um, I find value in studying Balintawak. Um, and this is both to serve my intention to promote all of the Filipino martial arts, but also to serve myself and uh, my particular training goals, which is, if you guys don't know, my personal training goal within the Filipino martial arts can be characterized as grace under fire. I want to face a big man from a different country who's bigger, stronger, and better than me. And while I try to hit him as hard as I can with my stick, and while he's trying to do the same, I want to express art, beauty, sophistication, elaboration, and grace. And that might sound crazy, and I've paid my dues, you know, in trying to execute the more flowery movements of FMA while a big dude from Germany is trying to smash my face in. <laughs> There's a definite pain penalty, but the rewards are so much, uh, the, the rewards are totally worth it. So I said I was going to talk about Germany. I said I was going to talk about France at the end of this. And um, there, you know, let's talk about France, for example. Like in, in the United States, right? Like there is still this artifact of, you know, French people, you know, surrendering easily. But you go to France, you, you meet the French people. They have such a 
deep, deep history and fighting. Uh, what I love about the French people is uh, w when it comes to martial arts, and the same for the Germans as well, is that um, they have they have this uh, duality of purpose. One, uh, they both want to honor the art, the history, the lineage, the culture of the Philippines when they're studying their Filipino martial arts, right? So they'll do the curriculum, they'll 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 bow as needed, they'll they'll do everything, but they also seek this path that is true to who they are, which is they want to be able to fight with this, right? Like the art is fine, but the fight is final. I'm, I'm borrowing that from the tactical world. The art is fine, but the fight is final. And so the French people and the German people, from my estimation, are doing just incredible explorations. And um, I'm, I'm, let, let, me, let me speak frankly here. Sometimes they're vilified for that. Sometimes they're kicked out of systems. Sometimes they're made to call it something else. Uh, sometimes they feel the cold shoulder and they're exiled and excommunicadoed from um, these classical Filipino martial arts systems when they begin to explore their own pathways to serve their own goals. And, uh, and I can see because of past scars from the Filipino people of uh, Westerners and Europeans coming to the Philippines, taking the art and then presenting it as something else. I can see where that pain comes from, but I think we're in a, we're, we're in different times. And certainly we shouldn't be applying um, the byproducts of our past scars into newcomers into the system, because that's not going to serve the system very well. Um, and so a big shout out to uh, anyone in France and in Germany and, and all of Europe, right? I don't mean to single these two out, but they're they're doing something incredible. So still shout out to Spain, shout out to Switzerland, shout out to to Sweden and Finland. And of course, the Italians, um, they talk a little bit louder than the rest of the Europeans, but they're doing great things <laughs> in Filipino martial arts as well. So guys thank you guys very much for watching if you guys are watching from facebook please uh take a moment to um you know to go on youtube and and watch it there as well um i i would really appreciate that i would really appreciate uh you subscribing to the channel and your 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 subscription means that you just want to keep a pulse on on the things that are happening here uh, at fma source doesn't mean you support me doesn't mean you like me uh it doesn't mean any of that it just means like okay there's there's something worth it here um but if you're not going to subscribe to this channel please subscribe to other filipino martial arts channels particularly um within the group of fma systems that you're interested in so if you're interested in balin walk you know just type up balin walk on youtube um, find all of these channels and and show your support by subscribing to their channels because the more FMA grows as a subsystem or as a niche in YouTube, it's going to benefit us all at the end of the day. All right. So spread that FMA love. Don't be afraid to call out the bullshit either, you know. Um, but even then, even then, um, everybody, it, you know, social media is a war, man. It's a war. Got my thousand yards there. And it's very difficult to uh, to grow in the social space if you're having at the time the resources, the tools, or the money to do it. So we can all support each other. Um, in the comments in this video, please share some links of Filipino martial arts YouTube channels that you enjoy and that you like. And uh, I'll be sure to subscribe to them personally. Okay, so thank you guys very much. Let's see the comments. Um, even Attilo says Balintawak was influen influenced by a French prisoner. Wow. That's amazing, Bertel One. That's the way how to do it. And I found you. Thank you very much. I hope you're subscribed. I think Knuckle Dragger FMA should be your next t shirt. Shout you know, all FMA practitioners used to be Knuckle Dragon smash and bashers, you know? But uh, it was appropriately softened. I ain't going to hate. I am not going to hate. You need to soften systems to be able to spread them far and wide. But I like to call it Trojan horsing, you know. Inside the FMA Trojan horse is still this hard, simple, brutal 
brutal tactics, techniques, and concepts that, hey, if you don't work hard to dismantle the exterior of that horse, you're never going to get to the good stuff inside. All right. Hey, thank you guys for your comments. This is very cool. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, but please do keep the comments coming. Continue to give me suggestions. Continue to call me out on my bullshit. Uh, continue to encourage um, myself, my crew, my group, my affiliations. Um, it's quite big, actually. It's quite extensive, and it extends far outside the borders of Filipino martial arts, which can be confusing sometimes. It can be confusing when I say, check out um, integrative defense strategies, you know, because they have um, concepts that are outside of FMA that can be integrated into FMA. You know, um, you check out South Narc and what he's doing with his knife defense. Check out Jared and Tricom system, what he's doing with knife defense. Check out Mick Coop and uh, check out Tim Kennedy. Like all these people that are, um, are just amazing resources for knowledge that you know at, in, in, to some degree can be deemed as being outside the framework of fma there's so much boxing my god like how did filipino martial arts lose our boxing friggin heritage <laughs> you know what i mean like there's so much to be gleaned from the boxing methodology except for that cardio crap i don't, I don't know what's up with cardio i'm a filipino martial artist i don't need no cardio I'll just hit them with my knife. <laughs> FYI, Balintawak Sugbu chapter here in Edmonton. Hey, is Sugbu, is that like, it's not, is that like Barao Sugbu? Because I saw, that's another, that's another really interesting system where I saw practitioners fighting for a knife in close and I, I identified real energy and a real struggle and Barao Sugbo is something that I, I want to study but Balintawak Sugbo I'm going to have to YouTube that right now I've never heard of it okay well maybe this I'll, I'll do that in a second maybe this is uh, uh, volume one of our uh, what Sugbu means Cebu? What? How are, how are you friggin' Finnish Germans teaching me <laughs> about my own language? No, I'm just joking. That's amazing. I didn't know Sugbu means Cebu. God, so much I don't know about this friggin'. Like, how do I have uh, an, an FMA podcast and I, and I don't know? Like, this is why you guys are the community, you guys. I did Barao knife. What? Barao means knife. Sugbo means is, is Cebu. So it's Cebu. This is incredible. Thank you. What else don't I know? There is so much I don't know. Okay. All right, guys, you're going to have to contact me. I need to know more about Balintawak Sugbu Eskrima Canada. I need to know about uh, this chapter in Edmonton. This is incredible. Um, but look, I'll, I'll share with you guys my my personal requirements because there's so many there's so many amazing FMA systems that we can't study them all. So maybe if you understood a, a little bit of other dimensions of my training goals, that might help. I am a student of, of, of the knife. I'm a student of knife defense. And I find that while Filipino martial arts has a lot to offer, I'm not going to discount boxing from knife defense. I'm not going to discount Muay Thai and wrestling and jujitsu from knife defense. So when I see Filipino martial arts systems that have already incorporated these tight range, uh, close range entanglement, and they exchange real energies, like I saw in a Barao Sugbo video i want to study that stuff really really bad right because if i can study a little bit of wrestling and jujitsu and, and boxing and how they can play into fma and then i discover fma systems who have already done that wow wow that's that's a beautiful path for me to explore and i think there's a lot of people out there in fma land um who might be interested in something similar so uh thank you guys for sharing this information with me um, 
Thank you, JTR. Thank you for being here. This is uh, amazing. So once again, guys, I want the comments to be full of different Balintawak FMA channels. For now, let's keep it Balintawak. I'm going to do other episodes where we get to share these other hidden gems on YouTube uh, because they're releasing content. We just They just need your views so that other... Here's what happens. Here's what happens when you subscribe to an FMA channel, okay? Um, the YouTube algorithm associates them with an interest group and a demographic that are looking for this kind of material. And so once that connection has been made, then they begin to see these, you know, otherwise obscure, unfamiliar or hidden gems. It begins to say, hey, you might like this. Hey, you might like that. So go ahead and subscribe to all of them. Subscribe to as many Filipino martial arts channels as possible. Right, it's gonna help everybody grow. It's gonna make FMA more discoverable to a bigger variety. It's one simple step we can all do to actually support all of FMA, despite the differences, the drama, the politics that he said, she said. Just by subscribing, you're supporting all of FMA. So let's go ahead, let's populate this uh, this one video with as many Balintawak. Uh, channels out there and I promise to do other uh, podcasts where we explore other FMA systems so um, thank you guys very much for watching this has been another episode of uh, the FMA dumpster fire podcast my name is Paul Rubio I super super I appreciate all you guys that tuned in live um, who commented who hit that like button that subscribe button there's a guy in Idaho teaching Barasugbo. Okay, let's find him. Let's find him. All right, let's continue to promote one another. Um, and uh, let's not be afraid of confrontation, um, of uh, civilized dialogue where we disagree with one another. And hopefully, eventually, we'll find a path to be able to do that with civility and peace. Mm -hmm. I love the Filipino martial arts, everybody. And thank you for everybody who continues to be an ambassador to the Filipino martial arts, despite, you know, some of the things that plague all of martial arts, to be honest. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for continuing to promote the art, history, culture of the Filipino people by way of this thing that belongs to all of us, the Filipino martial arts. Thank you. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>